Hey everyone, this is Nick, and packaging has always been an issue on Linux. Whether it's the trouble of packaging your own app from multiple distributions, or the trouble you might get into when using the old traditional repo system and its dependency hell, or even the remaining problems with flat packs, snaps, or even app images, Linux has a packaging problem. And as developers realize how important it is that they control how their software is packaged and distributed, other problems pile in, specifically unofficial packages, which are packages that are not specifically made by the developer themselves, or at least endorsed by them. So let's talk about this. Oh wait, let's talk about our sponsor first. Thanks to OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. OnlyOffice is the only office suite I use on all my Linux PCs nowadays. It's open source, it's fast, it looks good, and it's super compatible with Microsoft Office formats. You can download it for free and run it locally on any computer, whatever the operating system, including Android and iOS. Or you can couple that with a free personal cloud that lets you edit online and can be connected to a lot of storage services you might already use, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Nextcloud, OneDrive, and a lot more. This personal cloud has received a big update recently with a dark theme, a free library of templates, it supports a ton more languages, and it has a lot of hotkeys you can use to navigate on top of having an interface refresh. If you need a powerful, cloud-ready, and compatible Office suite for Linux, or any other operating system, I don't think you can do better than only Office. So head over to the link in the description below to download it or create your own personal cloud. Okay, let's talk packages, because this topic on Linux isn't simple. We basically have three conflicting models nowadays. We have the old distro-maintained packages model, the unofficial flat packs, snaps, or app images model, and the officially supported packages, whatever the format model. So the last one is the easiest. These are packages, whether they are devs, AUR install scripts, RPMs, flat packs, snaps, app images, it doesn't matter. They are the official ways to get a specific application. The app is shipped exactly as the developer intended, in formats that they feel they can support, and so all users of these get the experience as it should be. This doesn't mean that these packages are perfect or work 100%. Mistakes can still happen. Wouldn't that be wonderful, a world without bugs? Or maybe it would be super boring. If Linux ever has no bugs anymore, I'm moving to BSD. But whether they're stable or not, with these official packages, if you have a problem, you can report an issue and it's very, very likely that the developer will try and tackle it. The older distro maintained packages model is what we used to have on every distribution and what we still have mostly on distros like Ubuntu, Fedora and a ton of other ones. Even though these progressively supplement the apps in the repos, by apps distributed as flat packs or snaps. This model has issues as well. There are different types of repositories. For example, on Ubuntu, you have the main repo, which is the one that contains all the packages officially supported by Ubuntu. You have the universe repo, which contains packages that are not supported by the Ubuntu team. And on both these repos, while some packages might be maintained by the original app developer, Often, the maintainer is someone that works on the package itself, not on the app. Second, there is nothing stopping any random person to create their own repository and start packaging applications, even if they don't really know what they're doing or if their packages are broken or not. This model basically means that the app developer has a version of their application in the wild that they didn't know about, that they didn't create, but they're still going to receive support tickets and issues on this specific version. It's like not knowing you have a kid, but being asked to pay for all the damages it causes as it grows up, even though you never even knew he existed, or you never even wanted it. Wait, that's a terrible analogy, that's exactly what happens in the real world. And no, before you ask, that hasn't happened to me. Yet. Last model is the unofficial flat pack snap app images thing. This basically has the same issues as the old repo model. The difference being that the packages are distributed through universal formats that run basically everywhere, compared to older packages that generally just run on one distro, or even only on a specific release of the distro. What's important here is that anything that the developer hasn't packaged themselves or endorsed is unofficial. But why would unofficial packages be bad? That's what open source is all about, right? Anyone can pick the code, 
package it up and distribute it however they want. And yes, that's absolutely true. That's what has allowed so many distros to pop up. Even if you don't count the ones that piggyback on Ubuntu's or Fedora's repos, a lot of distros have their own repositories and sometimes even their own packaging systems. If unofficial packages were not a thing, these distros would basically have no software at all. At least they wouldn't have had until universal formats like Flatpak, Snaps and App Images popped up. Because let's be honest, no app developer is going to create a package specifically for your super niche distro. You're gonna have to do it yourself. Unofficial packages let users get all the software they want on virtually every distribution using the original packaging method. The AUR is basically 99% unofficial packages. It's mostly contributed by Arch users. And while some packages are endorsed by the original developers, most of the time they're just user contributed without any official support. Importantly, this model of having your operating system package software and distribute it is unique to Linux. Neither macOS or Windows work like that. Microsoft doesn't go around making apps into .exes and adding them to the Windows Store. Apple doesn't either. Only on Linux have we been doing that, because historically, supporting multiple distros was extremely complicated, and distros preferred having access to programs, unofficial or not, than not having software at all or letting users compile their own stuff. It's the direct result of fragmentation and it also has caused more fragmentation. But it's a very normal thing in open source and specifically free software. It's something that we all got used to. A package might not have been contributed or created by the original developers, but since it's in the official distros repos, we are okay to trust it. And that's one of the main issues here. Who do you trust for your software? Distributions are supposed to have teams looking over each new version of each new package and have a process in place to control the quality of the packaging, as well as its security. So even if the package is not contributed by the original developer, you can ensure that it runs well and doesn't try to do anything shady. But with official packages, you have to trust the application's developer. Do you believe that the app's developers have done a good job and aren't trying to do anything weird to your system? And generally, for me, the answer is very simple. I trust the app developers way more than a distro maintainer. Because if I didn't trust the app developer, I probably would not use their application at all. Now, of course, you can be mad at an application's developer for not supporting your distro officially. For example, if you use app images only and the devs refuse to package their app as app images or refuse to help someone else do it. But in the end, if you want to use their app, it's probably because you believe it's good and you trust them. If you don't, I don't really understand what you're trying to do with your computer. I want to use the worst and least trustworthy apps I can find. Actually, that might be a pretty fun video idea. In the end, the older distributions are the one who package apps model was necessary because there was simply no way an application developer could service all distros and all their releases. It's just a ton of work to try and match all the dependencies you need to what's available on every distro and every release of every distro. That's why Flatpaks, Snaps, App Images emerged. They solve all these issues you package once and it runs everywhere. Now these formats also have some other problems, but at least they fix the core developer can't package apps themselves problem. But even if we put the trust issue aside, Unofficial packages also have other problems. They are distributing an application under its original name, with its original logo. Basically everything that would make a user think that it's a completely official version. Why is that a problem, you're going to ask? It is the exact same application. It does the exact same thing. It's just been packaged by somebody else than the original developer. And that's exactly the problem. It looks like the original official app. In most cases, it's not an issue. If the package is well done, well maintained and well supported, then everything is fine. The app works as it's supposed to work. But if the packaging work is sloppy, if dependencies are just thrown in willy-nilly and the resultant app is all buggy, then it's the original developers that will suffer from it. Most users don't think about who packaged the application. They install it, then use it, and if there's a problem, they go to complain about it on forums or on the project's GitHub page. I see the GIMP logo. I see GIMP doesn't work. I assume GIMP is crap. 
simple and efficient. And that's how most people think. Distributions assume that users know that certain apps, depending on the repo they come from, are unofficial, unsupported, and that they should report their issues to the distribution itself. Well, unfortunately, users don't do that. They don't know, and they don't care, and they shouldn't have to. The end result is bug reports that end up in the application's queue, and that makes the devs waste time. They can either explore the issue, asking questions, and look into it, until they realize it's an issue with the package itself, and tell the user to report that to the distro maintainer. Or they can just say, we don't support your distro, you're on your own. In both cases, the developer has wasted time, and the image they convey isn't a friendly one. Either they shifted the blame to someone else, or they just told the user to naff off, politely or not. And if the user never enters a bug report and just decides that the app is crappy, then it's the project's image that suffers, not the distro's image. This specific user will just stay on their bad first impression and assume the app is just bad. And of course, that's not a generalized problem with distribution's repos. It's only an issue when the packaging work has been sloppy or badly done. Most unofficial packages in distro's repos are fine and they work great. So, how do we strike a compromise between letting distributions distribute software and application developers maintaining a bit of control over their application's image and bug reports? Well, I can think of a few solutions. The first one that I think should be generalized is some kind of system to let the user know when the app is maintained by the original developer and when it's not. Whoa, 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 I, I just had an amazing idea. What if we added a blue or green check mark next to the name of the application to let people know that it's official and maintained by the original developer? I'm gonna trademark that, that, that seems like it's an original idea. These official apps could be filtered in our graphical app stores, and developers could probably also officially endorse packages on various distros, so they also have their little check mark. Add a bug report link to the application page that redirects to the package maintainer, and I think a lot of users would be a bit more guided. Although now it would be packagers and maintainers that would have to triage the issues between what's linked to the app itself and what's an issue with their package. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. Yes, oh, they have a problem with their package. Very funny. And there is, of course, the simple fact that this older packaging model is no longer necessary for most applications. Flat packs, snaps, app images, they mostly work on every distro and they allow developers to package once for every single release of every single distro. And they can distribute these packages themselves officially on various repositories or their own if they prefer. Well, not for snaps. It's either the snap store or no snaps at all. Flathub, for example, is working on a solution to identify apps made by the original developers. So when you download something off of Flathub, you know whether the app is official or not. These formats might not be perfect and they are not universally loved, but they are the solution to the issue. If the developer can easily package and distribute their app themselves without waiting for years before they're included in a distro's repos, then there is no need for unofficial packages at all. Unless you're a distro that absolutely hates all these packaging formats and whose sole purpose is to provide an experience without them, which is also okay, but in that case, you have to assume the burden of support. In the end, there is no simple answer. There have been problems with unofficial packages. For example, the bottles developers have been so fed up by badly packaged versions of their app that they explicitly asked distros to not package their app, unless they're willing to commit the time and effort to test them and ensure their work well. But that doesn't mean that all unofficial packages are bad. Most of them work fine and don't exhibit any issues. They could, however, be presented in a more legible manner to ensure that users understand what is officially distributed by the developer and what isn't, and also to ensure that the app developer doesn't have to shoulder the burden of maintaining and supporting something that they never asked for or never wanted to support in the first place. And they also wouldn't have to support the bad reputation and image that comes with telling various users that their OS is not supported. What is supported though is Linux on today's sponsor's devices. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they're the sponsor of this video. 
They make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. You can pick between a variety of very popular distributions, or you can install your own, knowing that this hardware supports Linux very well. And if there are some tweaks needed, they have repos and PPAs, talking about that, that lets you add the various tweaks that you might need to ensure that the hardware works 100% flawlessly. They have a huge range of devices, from the smallest Ultrabooks and Nox to the biggest gaming PCs or gaming laptops. And all of their devices have a ton of configuration options, from the CPU to the GPU to the RAM to the SSD, or even getting your own logo engraved, laser etched, on the lid of your laptop. I use their Stellaris 15, which is their high-end workstation gaming laptop, every day to edit videos, and it's just a dream. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that you support Linux's development, and you want to make sure that basically Linux runs on that device, head over to the link in the description below and get a new device from Tuxedo. They're really cool. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really like what I do and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can also support me by clicking on the super thanks button below this video or on the PayPal link in the description, or you can join my YouTube members or Patreons. Both of them get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.